out in line. Let's turn the down for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, blue, never give up. You represent America. kids. Washington is the only hero we have. The only man the whole country will support. Otherwise, the revolution will remain New England's war. You signed on with this army for six months' service. However, the enemy is still behind his barricades. He is not going home. But neither are many of your friends. They died in that fight on the hill, Bunker Hill, defending an idea. That idea is freedom. July 1775. Dearest mother, this has been the hardest, hottest, bumpiest trip I've ever made. Thank heavens it's almost over. We are 10 days out of Philadelphia and should arrive in Boston any time now. General Washington is to take command of the Continental Army. And Dr. Franklin has assigned James and me to report on it. James has embarked on a great experiment. How do you know where these birds will go? They're homing pigeons. The Gazette will get news from the war before any other newspaper. Fly away home, little brother. He's headed north. I keep telling you, we ought to eat them. Here we are! I can't wait to see the army. I can't wait to eat! Is an army? General Washington takes command of colonial forces in Boston. The general has begun to impose discipline on the eager and patriotic but disorganized group of citizen soldiers facing General Howe's formidable British regulars. I don't know how General Washington will turn this rabble into an army. A more sloppy, disrespectful, bullheaded group this journalist has never seen. But Dr. Franklin, this is supposed to be James's report from the front. What you read is not at all like what he said in his dispatch. Editor's privilege. Besides, if the army is to become a real army, they'll need money from Congress. And Congress won't give it if they think the army is hopeless. It was a brave thing to let the kids go along, but I can't help but worry about them. They'll be fine, Moses. James has the makings of a fine reporter. And Sarah? Well, if either of those boys gets out of line, Sarah will put them straight soon enough. Have you spotted any of James's pigeons yet? I've seen plenty of pigeons, but none of them look like war correspondents. I told him that the distance might be too great. Just as well he uses the army gallopers as a precaution. General Washington has his work cut out for him. He has to strengthen the area around the entire city and somehow whip this bunch of farmers and layabouts into an army. Rations here are low? I would say rations here are non-existent. We throw together whatever we can find. 
I've heard that things will change now that General Washington is in charge. I've heard there's an island in the south where dogs can talk and wear hats. Do you really work for a newspaper? Yes, indeed. Dr. Benjamin Franklin's Pennsylvania Gazette. Pennsylvania? What business is this of theirs? Dr. Franklin says all the colonies have a common interest in this war. That's so. Well, I'm just interested in yours truly and his part of this war, which will be over and done with in 52 days. 52? How can you be so sure of that? That's when my enlistment is up. That's when most of these men will be on their way home. What if the British are still in Boston? They're welcome to it as far as I'm concerned. Look, laddie, I'm a storekeeper. Dry goods mostly, some fribbles for the ladies and such. I can't afford to let my business do for itself. And that there's Jeremiah Braddock. He's a farmer. Who's going to bring in his hay and sweet corn if he's stuck down here parading around for Mr. Washington? What are these children doing here? Take it easy, Stryker. They're doing no harm. This one says he writes for a newspaper. Really? And you, Sprout, what are you supposed to be? I'm not supposed to be anything. I am Henri Richard Maurice Dutrois Lefebvre. Did you hear that, boys? This tadpole's got a whole laundry list for a name. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you read? Of course. Is there something you would like me to read for you? You little scamp. <laughs> Farmer from Virginia. Everyone knows nothing good ever came out of the South. I hope you're as good at fighting redcoats as you are at chasing children. <laughs> James spends more and more time each day with General Washington's aides, trying to find out and report to Dr. Franklin the Army's plans. But only as long as the naval guns in the harbor remain silent. I'm afraid we still don't know if the pigeons are getting through. I thought Philadelphia was that way. Are you sure these aren't British pigeons? We only have one doctor. Poor Dr. Marston, for the men here and over at the school. And you know, he's not well himself. Were these men wounded in the battle at Bunker Hill? Yes, but most are just sick. It's a fever that takes them mostly. We have no ice. I wonder what devotion to duty or country would make men go through something like this. We're fighting for our liberty, young lady. Simple as that. If these New Englanders don't know how to drill yet, they certainly know how to dig. These hardy colonists know more about building than fighting. They never had an army, but they have carved a nation out of a wilderness. No one knows how long the British will wait before they attack. Or, indeed, why they are waiting at all. We can only be thankful for the time to ready this army. December, 1775. Dearest Mother, We've been in this camp for nearly five months. A beautiful autumn has come and gone, as have all the leaves on the trees. Henri stays out most of the day, 
and comes in with a bag full of odds and ends he's collected from the battlefield. He insists there will be a big market for souvenirs of the Great Battle for Boston. And now, as if he didn't have enough on his shoulders, General Washington has a new worry. The enlistment of half of the men here is up, and many of them are going home. In this freezing cold, General Washington's army is melting away in the face of a dangerous enemy. Man of New Hampshire, you signed on with this army for six months' service. That enlistment is now up, and you want to go home. I cannot blame you for that, and I cannot stop you from going. I'm here to appeal to you to stay. Six months ago, you and your neighbors stood on that hill, Bunker Hill, and heroically fought off a superior force. The enemy is still behind his barricades, and he is not leaving until we make him do so. He is not going home, but neither are many of your friends and neighbors. They died in that fight on the hill, defending their honor, defending an idea. That idea is freedom. Before you go, I ask you to think about the men you knew and loved who will forever man their post on that hill. <laughs> And this is Colonel Henry Knox, Colonel of the Artillery. There are 56 British cannons waiting for us at Fort Ticonderoga, captured this past May. Knox needs men to move those guns here to Boston to bear on the enemy. We need artillery to drive the British from this city. Who will go? The time is past when we think of ourselves as New Hampshire men or Virginians. We are Americans, and we have to stand as one. Are you with me? Aye. Yes. Come here, come here. Colonel Knox and the promise of his cannon seems to have convinced at least some of the men to stay. Now all they have to do is move them 500 miles over winter mountains, somehow. Since I was there when the cannons were captured, I'm going back to see how he does it. Will the pigeons come here, or go on to Philadelphia? Philadelphia, I hope. Be safe. I'm going to visit with some of the new recruits in from Maine. Want to come along? No, I... Uh, I've got an assignment of my own! Promise me you'll introduce me to Dr. Franklin when I make it down to Philadelphia. That's a promise. I've read every edition of his Poor Richard's Almanac. Really? I used to have a bookshop down in Boston. Ah, here it is. Poor Richard's Almanac. Never failed to find something useful in these pages. Listen to this. If you would not be forgotten as soon as you're dead and rotten, either write things worth the reading or do things worth the writing. Well then, Colonel, you do the doing and I'll do the writing. Oh! 
right, all right, that's enough. This is dreadful. This show opens on Saturday night, and you people will never be ready. General Howe himself will be here, and he's issued a special invitation to General Washington himself to come and bring his own noose. Take it from Reggie's chorus. Reggie! From the top, and for heaven's sake, will you two decide on who's where in the cow suit? The Yankee Doodle came to Boston, thought he'd beat the Tommies. Got a look at Cage's guns and ran right home to Mommy. Yankee Doodle went to war, Yankee Doodle dandy. Thought the Brits would run away, but he found us too handy. Hey, you! Get back here! You say they plan this entertainment for Saturday night? Yes, sir. And they expressly invited you to attend. Well, that is a tempting invitation, isn't it? Perhaps an invitation for us to launch an attack. This is just a quick raid, gentlemen. We don't have enough men for a full attack. Bring back whatever you can carry, especially powder. Let's move out! The Yankee Doodle came to Boston, thought he'd beat the Tommies. Sorry to interrupt the entertainment, but it seems General Washington has launched an attack on Bunker Hill. Come along, men! General Washington's captured much needed supplies in his raid, and let General Howe know that the Americans will attack without warning. James's pigeons have all come here instead of flying to Philadelphia. And I can't get them to leave. James has been gone with Colonel Knox for over a month now. I'm beginning to worry about them. More new recruits are coming in each day, and this army becomes stronger each day. What General Washington has done is nothing short of a miracle. He doesn't say much, but he inspires confidence and obedience by the sheer force of his presence. British leave Boston, Continental Army victorious in siege operation. 
It's a great victory, Dr. Franklin. Yes, and we needed one. I imagine those redcoats are halfway home by now. I imagine they're halfway to New York. This war is far from over, but I suppose we should celebrate. At least Boston is free. Looks like one of James's pigeons. Here you go. June 28th. We've reached Newark and should be in New York by tomorrow morning. That dispatch is months old. Where on earth have you been, Bird? Wherever he's been, he's probably ready for a nap. Dr. Franklin says we should come back to Philadelphia as soon as possible. What will happen here? We'll keep a garrison here, but the bulk of the army and new troops from the southern colonies will be gathering in New York. How long do you think the war will last, Colonel Knox? I don't know, Sarah, but we have to be ready for as long as it takes. The new flag! And a new army! A worthy army! An army we can be proud of!